If you have some lower resolution videos that you want to upscale to 4K, now you can do it with this. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I have a website up for a company that sells a program that upscales video. It works amazing. I've actually been using it for a while now. And before I show it to you, I wanted to really get to understand it and then give you some of my tips and tricks for making the most of it. But first, let me show you the company that makes this. And so I've gone ahead and pulled up this website here by topazlabs.com. And what I love about this is that it finally gives me a great option at home that I can use to upscale some of my old videos. So obviously it'll work on any digital video you have, but if you're like me, maybe you have converted some old VHS tapes to digital. Maybe you have some old film that you have shot on older phones, early iPhones, the video quality is maybe 540p, those types of things. Dude, it just blows my mind how well this works and gives you some of the detail. And it doesn't just make it larger. It really has a lot of amazing AI that makes the image look sharper. They've got this little example here. I mean, look at that. It, it's kind of crazy. Now, there are a number of things that I have learned while doing this and some mistakes I've made. And I wanted to share those with you so that hopefully you can avoid making some video and spending some time. And sometimes it can take a while for your computer to render it and end up with videos that don't look very good. So, first of all, Topaz Labs has a variety of products here. If I go up to products, I wanna show you that they have a number of these, Denoise AI, Giga, Gigapixel AI, Sharpen AI, actually a lot of really good applications for enhancing photos. So I tell you what, if you are trying to enhance some old photos, I think a lot of us have those, old photos from weddings, something that you've scanned, that is something that works too. I have absolutely played around with those as well. But this is the video that I purchased and they didn't reach out to me. They didn't give me any software. I actually was looking for this to upscale uh, just some of my old home movies. Video Enhance AI is the application I'm talking about and you can buy it here for $200. Now I will say $200 for a piece of software is not cheap, but after using it, I think it's been worth every penny. So standard def to high def, all right? But like a lot of companies, what I think you can do here is actually download the application right here, try for free, and you can download this and use it for a little while. I don't remember exactly how long the trial was, but that's what I did. And once I experienced it, saw the results, I went ahead and bought it, all right? All right, so I've gone ahead and opened up the application here, and it's pretty basic. But I want to show you, first of all, what you can do is you can just take a video and you can drag it into the screen. You can obviously navigate to it too. So the first thing I have done here is I've actually gone ahead and dragged in a video that was shot of me years ago. And as you can see here, you know, it's uh, pretty low res. I think this is like 540p, so it's not even 720p. But as you can see here, it's zooming 100%. This, the images here are not great. The other thing that I really like about this is that you actually have some options on what you want to render. And I will tell you that's important because if you render a whole video, an hour or two hours, if you have an old movie or something that you're upscaling, it can take a long time. This computer here is a Mac with the M2 processor, so it's pretty quick, but it can still take, you know, say on like an hour long video, you know, an hour or two to render. So if you have an older computer, something with the M1, you know, that seemed to run pretty fast on my MacBook Air, that seems to run pretty fast. But if you are older than that on like a Core i3 or something like that, it may take a while, all right? So the first thing I wanna show you here is that I can pull this up and if you just want to render a certain portion of your video, you can do that too. So you can see right here, I'm on frame 1738, I can advance, but let's just say I wanted to start on that and not render all the stuff before, I can just type in 1738 and you can see it goes all the way to uh, 3898. So I'm just gonna go ahead here and kind of scrub forward. Okay, so there's a black screen, so I'm just gonna back up here and say render to 1828. Obviously you can render a whole video, but I just wanna show you that what it's gonna do now is it's only gonna render the short piece and that's gonna save you a lot of time. All right, now if we go over here to the video quality, they have a bunch of models and some of these models are a couple hundred megs for the AI, I guess, that controls it. Now. What you'll wanna do here is kinda of set some of these parameters based on the, your video, and then it kinda of recommends some models. So the first thing I wanna show you here is that video quality low, medium or high. You know, I'm gonna call this pretty low quality. I think that's pretty low quality. 
I have just found that when you go ahead and select things that are labeled low quality, it does the most amount of work to render it up. And so I kind of like that. This is the three different types of video you might have. Progressive, where it's kind of scanning, usually top down, and building the image, and then scanning, building the image, top down, top down, top down, kind of wiping the image very fast. Your eye usually doesn't see that. Interlaced is when you actually are kind of rendering each line individually. And what you get here, you might go see it, is that you kind of get some of these like horizontal lines. That is very typical on some of the digital video that I've seen in the past, you know, video from the 90s. I don't see it as much right now, but if you do see that, you might want to use the interlace. A lot of times I'm right here on CG computer generated. Uh, I am not really sure that the matters. I think I just kind of think this is the most agnostic one. Video artifact type. What I found here is that generally going to high compression is kind of where I almost start with all my videos. So if you go to motion or jittery or chop frame, you might see some of these change. Where I've noticed that it goes into some really different options is usually interlaced. And what you can see here is if I go to high compression, uh, it gives you some interlaced options. So I think what it's trying to do is it's trying to line up those mismatched lines. And so if you don't have those, don't bother with it because many times it's working on those lines and not really doing a great job of upscaling. All right, so I'm gonna start with CG low and then artifact type here, I usually go to high compression. You can choose some of the other ones, but I've kind of noticed that the model stayed the same. So for example, high compression shows me uh, Artemis low quality, Proteus and Gaia high graphics. If I go here to uh, blurry, it's probably gonna show me pretty much the same ones, the Artemis alias and Moyer. So, you know, kind of the same thing. So I'm just gonna go here to high compression. Now, what you will probably wanna do here is figure out the output size. A lot of times, going just 200% of whatever the original source video is is just fine because if you go too much higher than that, it can start looking a little janky. I mean, there's only so much interpretation of the image it can do, right? But what you can see here is my output will be 1920 by 1080, so it'll be 1080p once it's done. That's 200, like I said, 540p, I think was the original resolution there. But you can select a bunch of these. You know, I can select AK, and you can see here, it's gonna be an 800%, and it's also saying it may not work well with MP4 or this format at least. Um, what I have noticed here is that sometimes just going to high def, you know, this 1080p here is maybe kind of the minimum that you want to work with. Again, it's only it's 200% here, but sometimes it'll, you know, depending on what the original video is, go to 250%. So it's kind of a nice way to not have to think about the calculation. Now you can go up here to 4K and you can see that it's a 400% improvement. I'm just going to stick with 200%. Now you might be saying, Pete, I see 100%. Why would you upscale only to 100%? This is a great setting because... Let's say you have something that is already in 1080p or 2140, you know, a high res uh, size already, but the detail just isn't there. Maybe the focus was just a little out of whack, or maybe there's just a little bit of motion blur or something like that. You can use this setting to just go ahead and run the AI to upscale it to sharpen that image. I really think of that as kind of an image sharpener. But not only do I want to upscale this to a larger size, but I also want to get the detail that it's missing. So I'm going to go up to 200%. Now, the thing here is that we have three options, Artemis Low Quality, Proteus Fine Tune, and Gaia Computer Graphics. Now, if I don't know which one I want, all right, so now I have these picked and you can see that we have these three options right here. What I wanna do, if I am not familiar with these different types of upscaling, what I can do here is I can go to Compare and then it's going to go ahead and put these side by side, Artemis Low Quality, Proteus Fine Tune, Gaia Computer Graphics, and then I can go ahead and hit Preview right here and I'm gonna just slide my face down here. You can zoom in or zoom out, but this is good framing here where I can tell the difference. And it's going to go ahead and just take a few frames and apply the AI to each of them using each of these models. Now, the thing about this is that there's a pretty big difference between the way it does it, although the outputs might be pretty similar. So you can see my original one here, I'm pretty fuzzy, and I'm just gonna hit pause because I don't want this to keep recycling here. Now, what I found here is this Artemis version is really good when things are really blurry because what I think it does is it just tries to figure out the shapes and then it outlines the shapes. And when things are super blurry, really low quality, this seems to do a pretty good job, but it doesn't really do a great job on the details. Kind of my moles, my freckles, the imperfections on my face here, you know, the individual hairs. It kind of blobs them together, gives sharp lines to things, but it kind of gets a little cartoonish sometimes. But when you have a really bad video, that seems to do the best. Proteus Fine Tune here uh, seems to just kind of do 
everything pretty good. It kind of finds the edges pretty good. It can uh, add back detail. For me, this is the one I use a lot, and that's because I can also fine tune all of the parameters within Freddy's Fine Tune. The Guide Computer Graphics one kind of seems to look a lot like the Artemis I saw. I'm not even sure what that one does, but this one is my go-to default for when the video is really, really bad. And this is honestly a lot of what I will use when I am upscaling old home VHS videos that I've converted to digital. But this one, if you have filmed on an iPhone or even a Blackberry or Android device and it's just not the resolution you want, this is my go-to. All right, so you can just kind of spot check here and say, hey, this one looks the best over this one. So I'm gonna go back, close this and go back and select it. But what I also wanna show you here, and I just wanna go back here and I'm gonna to go to side by side. Um, what I wanna show you is now that I've selected Proteus Fine Tune, down here I get all of these model parameters. If I hit this little lightning bolt here, it's analyzing the image and going to come up with the best parameter, all right? And if I just go ahead here and preview it, what it will do is it will show me what these two images look like. As you can see here, this is, you know, not bad, but it's blurry. It's very classic video from 10 years ago. This is much sharper and obviously it's 200% larger too. So not only is it gonna be bigger, but the details are better here. I wanna show you here because what I can do here is I can move a lot of these, revert compression, recover detail, sharpen, reduce noise, dehalo, which kind of gets rid of some of those like blur, you know, kind of double up edges around the face or lines, anti-alias and blur. I'll tell you the two settings that I use the most are sharpen and recover details. Sharpen, it's kind of like image sharpening. It just kind of makes all those lines crisper. If it finds a line or if it finds a hair or you know the arm of the glasses, it's gonna really sharpen that up. But recover details tends to uh, kind of go in each pixel and say, is there something here and uh, brighten it up. So first of all, I'm just gonna put this back here. I wanna just go to sharpen and I wanna show you, I have raised that up and now you can see you know how crisp that line is there. That might not be a great thing depending on if it doesn't look natural or something. But you can see here, it's just a soft line, even on the cheek, but now it's a very sharp line. Uh, the glasses kind of blend into my face here. They are very, very sharp. You've got a really sharp reflection right there, all right? But obviously, a lot of imperfections in my face, but that's just my face. It's the one I got. If I go up here and recover details, what it tends to do, too, is it starts to sharpen everything in between. You can see this. Now, I'll tell you what. Looking at this video, the low-quality video next to the high-quality video, if I... Did not know any better this looks like it was filmed more recently right it maybe looks just a little over sharpened i might just back that off a little bit it seems to be giving me kind of like really sharp edges where we have a little bit of softness but there's no arguing that this is an older low res video and this is very sharp and in fact what this can do is save you some time and money from reshooting stuff where you had an old video and now you can really increase the quality of it and maybe reuse it and bring it up to a modern resolution, all right? So what I would probably do here is I don't mind those details. I might actually just jack that up and just pull back the sharpen a little bit. And the preview is great here. This looks pretty good. It's not super sharp, you know, it doesn't look like it's overdone or anything, but man, that is just way sharper. And even some of the things that your eye might not fixate on, kind of a little my mustache hair, you know, even that is brought back. And it's almost like witchcraft that, you know, I wouldn't even have been able to pick that out maybe in my mind, but the AI is picking that out. So it's it's awesome, it's incredible. You can even see the individual hairs right there. Um, again, nothing's perfect, but it's like I have a few gray hairs in my uh, eyebrows right up here and it looks like it gets them right there. So it's just really, really incredible, right? And now once you've got it set up where you're happy, you can just go down here and start processing, select a folder where you want it to output to, right? So the original file size 960 by 540, it is now going to output 1920 by 1080. So I think that's great. I have actually gone ahead and found some other videos and I wanna show you how stark the difference is. All right, so my first example here is a movie called Deep Star Six. I think this was from the mid eighties. It is an interesting movie. I saw it on Saturday morning one day. So um, even though it was made in the eighties, it was also shown on TV freely in the 80s but what is interesting about this is that from the 80s there was only a certain resolution this is not something that was down sampled and then i up sampled it and so there was data this is working off of the data that they had here so you can see on the left side we have the original film and then on the right side i've gone ahead and selected some settings and increased 
the quality there and upscaled it as you can see and just look at the faces there i mean on the left side it looks like classic 80s and then on the right side it is just so sharp even her watch there is so sharp that guy's face the beard the headset everything that he has there is just incredible even her hair there is so much sharper and what i like about this too is that you know it's kind of doing everything in proportion those buttons in the background which are supposed to be a little bit blurred like a bokeh effect aren't just extremely sharp as well so it does everything in proportion you know things that are sharpened twice as much just are all sharpened twice as much as opposed to just sharpening everything to a really fine level or something like that. So I really dig that, all right? Grabbed another video from uh, old movies here, and this one is 10 Inch Hero. I think this was filmed in the 90s, maybe even the late 90s, but again, not a high resolution film. I don't even think that it came out in high resolution or, you know, HD or 1080p or anything like that. But what I did here was kind of the same thing. Look at the sharpness of those plates. Look at the sharpness of the characters behind the counter there. It is just amazing. And if you look into the distance, right, you can see Daniil getting out of a BMW Z3. On the left side, I probably wouldn't even have noticed that. But on the right side, it's sharp enough that I recognize it as a Z3. So it's just pretty amazing. And as she comes into the restaurant here too, I mean, there's no question that it's better. And obviously you'll see those results as it's twice as large too, but even in the distance here, she is so much sharper, right? The characters are so much sharper. I feel like it's easier to watch, honestly, because you see so much more detail. It just feels like a modern movie. Here's another scene with the young Sherlock Holmes guy, I can't remember his name, Sean Patrick Flannery, I think. But, you know, the creases, the wrinkles in his face, man, it just looks incredible. These fireworks just look incredible. In this scene, Daniil is there too, again, and everything about this, you know, is just super sharp. Even the lines in her hair, the plants in the background, that lamp on the table. But if you look at the face of Alice Krieg, I believe her name is, just how much sharper that is. That looks like, to me, it was filmed in high resolution, and on the left side, you can tell that it wasn't. You know, and again, the uh, girl in the foreground here is not overly sharpened. She's still a little bit blurred because the focus of the shot is on Alice, and so... You know, you can see that clearly, even the, the bokeh and the autofocus wall in the back stays that way. So the AI on this is really great for, you know, sharpening of everything. You can see the three girls here and, you know, the faces, the hair, everything just looks like it was filmed this way originally. It's incredible. All right, another shot of the girls in this bus here. You can see exactly what I'm talking about for yourself. You can compare the original to the upscaled footage. To me, it's no contest. It really adds so much detail, so much life back to a video. So whether it's old videos that you have, family videos, things like that, does it work magic on everything? No, if the colors are really washed out, it does struggle a little bit. You can try that Artemis low quality AI model. That seems to work pretty well. But I will tell you what, if you want to save some of those old memories, if you shot video on old iPhones or old galaxies that just weren't that high resolution, you want to bring them back, I think you will be stunned. Now, like I said, I'm not affiliated with Topaz Labs or anything like that, but I did set up an affiliate account, so I will put a link to them in the description where you can buy that, and I will also put a 15% promo code so that you can get a discount on it because I think that if you have a lot of videos, this is a great way to preserve them. So... I'm a big fan of this. I'm a big fan of the other products. I will show you more of those in the future, but man, this is something that I think really saves the day on so many videos that I would have just loved to have kind of at a modern standard, and this really does it. So if you want to pick it up, follow the link in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper.